Anyway, we got Missy Hyatt on the line. Missy, how are you doing today? Hi, okay, how are you doing, Dave? Hey, I'm doing really good. I think the uh, first thing we should talk about is uh, update everyone on, on what you've been up to. Oh, God, I'm writing a book about my life in wrestling. I heard that. That's, yeah. that's, why, that's one of the reasons why we thought to bring you on. Okay, what, we're going to bring me on again like in August when it comes out because, you know, oh, we're going to plug it some more, you know. Yeah, so what's... What's, uh, what made you write a book, and what's your thoughts as far as everything's going? Well, what made me write it was mankind did so well, so that's what kind of <laughs> opened it up for me. And then um, I have two writers that have been helping me, and TV books that's owned by Lauren Michaels, they're the ones that bought it, and then um, Simon & Schuster is going to distribute it, I guess because, you know, they've had such great success with, like, mankind's books, so they're taking a chance on mine. Plus, mine's going to be a lot different in a way. So. What are people going to think of this book? What? What are people going to think of this book? They're going to be going, oh, my God, I cannot believe that she said that. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a lot of good stories to tell. I bet you do. Yeah, I sure do. I, so, I only know some I know, of them. And I am not leaving any stone unturned. Nobody gets off scot-free in this book. Even, even, even Bischoff? Oh, please. Of course he does. Everybody. Oh, Bischoff. I think Dave, oh, okay. you're even in there, too. I say something about the Wrestling Observer. Okay. Writer. Okay. Well, as long as it's true, it's okay. Yeah, no, it's, so. everything's true. We should get a plug. Okay. I know you'll be happy about that. Yeah, oh, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Okay. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> now, aside from that, you, you got married about uh, how many months ago? Was it a year ago, maybe? Uh, over a year. Over a year, okay. Mm -hmm. Over a year ago, and I'm still in college. I have about a year left after this semester. As a matter of fact, I just got home, and I was hooking up my computer, and I have to write a six-page paper uh, for Shakespeare. Which is so how's, col how's college going? It's going great. I love it. Do you Now, you are you still doing independent wrestling or not at all? Because I haven't seen your name as much as, like, even a year ago. Yeah, you know, I, I don't do that much because with, I work for a psychiatrist, and then I'm, I've been writing the book and going to school full-time, so it's kind of hard. I mean, I have a show coming up in Red Lion, Pennsylvania on December the 5th, but I just really don't take that many independent bookings because it's on the weekends, and my weekends I need to study and I like to rest because my week's pretty full. Do you miss not being around wrestling, or is it is it kind of like cool not to be around it after being around it for all the years? Both, both. I mean, I see it and I miss it because I'm like, oh wow, it was so fun. I had such a great time. But then I think to myself, oh god, if I had to get on an airplane every day and if I had to go sit in an arena for six hours just to go out and work for ten minutes, you know. And it's that's that's how I feel on the weekends. You know, you drive five hours to work 10 minutes and drive five hours home, you know, that people don't understand that there's a lot more than goes to it than what they see on TV, you know, it's, it takes a well, lot of what, time. What do you think, you know, in, in, in a lot of ways when we think back on this whole thing, with the phenomenon of women in wrestling, I mean, you were, when you came in, there were only, what, two or three probably in the whole country. Yeah. I mean, like Sun, Sunshine was probably the one that really popularized it, and then you came in, um, God, Sunshine she started had, it all, yeah. Right, Sunshine and Precious in Dallas was the big feud in like ninety in eighty three, and then you were probably about her third feud, so probably a couple of years later, so you and you and Sunshine, and then you had a run, you know, and you were yeah, went with Mid South, and then uh, later with uh, WCW, and uh, very briefly with WWF, and um, you and of course ECW, so you pretty much went everywhere, but you were one of the first ones, and now of course there's many many women, in fact. In fact, on every independent show, there's what probably about half a dozen of them in, on the national promotions. They're all over. I mean, what's what's your thoughts as far as the explosion of women in wrestling? Well, I know one thing is that they don't have to pay them as much as they pay the guys, because <laughs> it's still very male-dominated sport. And another thing is that the promoters realize that sex and violence sells. So having a babe out there really helps. I mean, your demographics are guys mostly that watch the stuff. So. Nope. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, as far as, you know, one of the things, and, you know, you were involved in it, and it's a lot, I think it's worse now in many ways because the, the outfits are a lot more revealing than when you were going around as far as, um, you know, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for, the measures that you have to take to look like that. I'm not saying for a photo shoot, but, like, you know, 300 days a year. You know, a lot of people, I don't think they realize, you know, you're, no one's born like that, and no one stays like that without, 
you know, a lot of sacrifices, <laughs> you know, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, but you know what? A lot of the guys make sacrifices, too. I mean, dieting, working out, steroids. I mean, you know, they make a lot of sacrifices, too. I think it's, you're right, it's more for the women, but it's like that in everything, in modeling and, you know, anything that you're going to be on television or any profession that you're going to use your looks, Basically, you've got to really take care of yourself, and you can't be, you know, eating that extra cheeseburger, or if you really want fries or something like that. That's one thing I don't miss. Right there. <laughs> Not that I've gotten fat or anything like that, because I haven't. But you know, knowing that I don't have to, you know, worry about this or worry about that. Thank God I don't have a bikini contest or anything like that coming up, because I don't know how the girls do it. Yeah, because they've got to do, like, I mean, I remember when when you did, you did the bikini contest on a pay-per-view with Medusa, and I mean, I remember, like, you know, you you, you pretty much were, weren't eating for, like, about a week or two, right? Oh, my right? God, I, I passed out, like, three days beforehand. We were standing, we were doing the Clash of the Champions, I think we were in Charleston, and it was so funny, because Magnum then, they're going, Missy was just standing there, and all of a sudden, she was, boop, on the floor, because, I mean, I was dieting and, like, doing two hours aerobics every day, because I wasn't going to get in a bathing suit and have a, you know, and look. Bad. I mean, if I'm going to be in a bathing suit on a pay-per-view or anything on television, you know, I want to look good. Plus, I paid the guys off in the truck. I bought them a bottle of Crown Royal just to make sure they wouldn't shoot my behind because, you know, I just I thought it was kind of big. And um, so they, they didn't get any camera shots of that. But I know Medusa was training really hard, you know, herself to do it. So the girls that have to do it now, you know, I give them, you know, they're a lot younger, though, so... Different Some of them, not, you know, De Deborah's not, and Deborah's older than you. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's up with that, but anyway. I, you know what, and you know what makes me upset though, Dave, and I'm so mad, and I want everyone that know, I'm in the part of Brooklyn, I live in New York, but I'm in the little area of Brooklyn that Time Warner Cable, I do not get TNN. Oh, really? Yes, and I am so mad, I want my WWF, because I don't watch WCW. So I want my WWF, and I'm so, I, I'm like having withdrawals and stuff. And Thursday night, I don't get to see SmackDown because I have class. Mm. You can tape it. How? I don't get TNN. Oh, you can so tape, you're, yeah, on Channel Nine. Yeah, channel Nine, you can tape Thursday. Yeah, I guess Thursday. Thursday. Listen, yeah. my VCR is still flashing twelve. Okay, I don't even <laughs> know how to tape. You just put the tape in. You press play. You put it on a six-hour tape. You got six hours to uh. Get six, six hours lead time, you can get it. Get it more. <laughs> That's true. Put it on slow too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we apparently are having some telephone problems, so it's I don't know if you can call in or not. I mean, our number is one eight seven seven three nine two thirty two ninety nine. I'm told that it's difficult, if not impossible, to get in. So I've to I'm told that if you want any questions asked to Missy Hyatt, you can email them in at uh, Dave Meltzer at iata dot com, so we can get some of those questions in a couple of minutes. But I got a lot of questions of my own, Missy. You know, in um in like uh. The years that you were in wrestling, going back, who would you say were the most, well, I'd say the nicest people and the most not nice people, I guess is a nice way to put it, okay. that you came in contact with? Okay, well, um, as far as girls or guys? Both. Anyway. Okay. Well, um, the person that really helped me the most was probably Jim Ross, and I really, really liked working with him. I haven't talked to him in a long time. As a matter of fact, I tried to get in touch with him because I wanted him to do a... Um, quote from my book, but he never got back in touch with me. I guess he's a big, busy guy being vice president of the World Wrestling Federation. And um, people that I've kept in touch with is like um, Barry Darso's wife, Teresa, and Jeannie Austin, Steve's ex-wife, and Kimona, and... Mm -hmm. She's in WCW now. Yeah, I know. She looks so good, too. See, she's young, though. She, she's young. She's got a great body, so it's like easy for her. And Polly, I guess, I still keep in touch with. Mm -hmm. um, people. That, there's only, like, maybe a couple of people that I don't really like. One of them's um, uh, Kevin Sullivan mm -hmm. and um, Bishop, of course. And that's probably about it, I think. I mean, I don't, there's not really anybody that I dislike, you know. You... you made a lot of headlines many years ago when you sued WCW and Eric Bischoff. I don't know what you can, because I, I know there was like a, a gag order in the settlement. I don't know what you can or want to say about it. What can you say about it right now? Um, well, I can just say that the, the lawsuit was concluded in December of 96, and I'm really, really happy with the outcome of it. 
But, I mean, anybody, you know, what's so dumb is that they tell, that they said, okay, you can't say anything about it, but the whole lawsuit is public record in Fulton County. Anybody can get it. Yeah. You know? So. What's, it's not uh, very good reading, but, you know, you can get it if you want. I mean, I remember reading it. <laughs> oh, you read it? I, oh, yeah, when it first came out, of course. Oh, okay. I'm sure I, didn't know that. I'm sure I wrote about it. I know oh, I okay. I didn't know that. Oh, oh yeah. It was, Hold on a second. This is a pretty big deal at the time. Hi. I'm sorry, what? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Dave, what? Oh, no, no. It was, pretty, it was a pretty big deal at the time, remember? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I know. It was. It you, was a big deal for You were running around on the, on the talk shows and everything like that? Oh, hey, please, you know, that, yes. That reminds me of something. What? You've, done, you've probably done more talk shows than anyone I know, not just for wrestling, I mean, many times for wrestling, many times not, of talk shows. What talk shows are works and what talk shows are shoots? Oh, they're all a work, please. Let me really? tell you something. Really? They pay. Listen, they pay. Well, I'm an actress, so I get paid like $600 to do a talk show. So basically, if someone said, if you came up there and said that you had an alien baby, I mean, I'd do it. Pay me the money. I don't care. So I had an alien baby. I would do that. I mean, and we're, I was working on 57th Street at La Barbat, and a lot of the you know, talk shows are taped around there. And what happens is once you do a talk show and you're really, really good on it, all the producers are friends, and they pass your name around. So that's why when I went on Maury Povich, they had me wear a wig because, you know, I had just done, I think, like Sally Jesse a few weeks before. But they all work. They're all works. I, I mean, you- I believe they are. Well, you were on them. You would, you would well, know. Well, yeah, because I mean, they kind of tell you what to say. And then, I mean, then what they did when we did uh, Ricky Lake, that was definitely a work. The only one I was ever on of the major ones was Donahue, and that was not a work. I can tell. I mean, for sure, that was not a work. Oh, really? Why? <laughs> did you get beat up or something? No, 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 no. But I mean, I boy, I was in the middle of that. I know that wasn't a work. But I mean, as far as like, you know, I've I've had friends besides you over the years that have been on like um, Sally Jesse and things like that, and right. I and I just. I had one friend who was on Sally Jesse, and it was some, like, weird perversion, and I just go, like, I didn't know you were like that. And he just goes, what? He goes, I was an actor. That was all a script. Right. It was yeah. the same thing. The Sally Jesse was the worst, because I was the one about, like, I can use my body if I want or something like that. And I had some dominatrix sitting there beside me, and I thought she was going to, like, beat me up. And then during the break, she's like, hey, do you want to get into a fight? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> scared me. She had all these piercings everywhere, and I was just like, God, oh, this lady is wild. She's bigger than me too, so I didn't want to do when it. you when you first broke in, I mean, like I, I just remember a conversation that we had. I, this is actually long after you broke in. Now that I think about it, but it was it was um we had a conversation, and I mean, it just reminded me of the total double standard in that when you were in WCW, you know, they were asking questions about your private life and trying to get on your private life. Um, you know, kind of like, oh, you're as a representative of the company, yet any guy in that company could have done the exact same stuff you did and worse, and they would just be studs, right? Exactly. And I always thought, like, you know, this is, you know, it's like, who's, you know, as long as you're not, like, um, you know, doing something that gets in the papers or something like that, what what does it matter when you're off business? It doesn't. It doesn't. But that's what they would say. I mean, I got written up in my folder one time because they said, you know, oh, you were out doing like this, that, and the other. And, like, it's okay that Ric Flair goes to bars and he gets freaking secretaries and nurses and flight attendants drunk and they end up taking off all their clothes and he exposes himself for everybody to see. I mean, I'm not the only one. Everybody. I mean, Rick Flair has this thing about dropping his pants in public places. So that's okay for the world champion to do it. But, you know, if I go out and, and I'm hanging out with a bunch of friends or something like that and they're partying, I get yelled at for it. So, like you said, it's double standards. Maybe it's changed. I don't know. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, that I don't know. I just remember, like, during the Bill Watts era and, you know, you getting in trouble over things. And I was just thinking, like, you know, if, like, I mean, the, the guys are doing the exact same thing. So what's the, what's Even the deal? Even worse. Yeah, a lot worse. A lot worse. <laughs> a lot worse. Um, what are you? Are you still? Do you still follow hockey or not at all? No, not really. I don't really? Have time. Yeah. No, no, I don't have any time. And you're not watching WCW at all at all now these days either. Not really. I'll turn it on every once in a while and see it. Just if I can, if I think I'm going to see Kimona or something. But other than that, I really don't watch it. I like there the was, WWF. It's pretty funny. Yeah. There was, um, we had, we had Lance Russell on the show yesterday who told us to say hi to you. Oh, good. Yeah, he's in my book. I talk about him, too. He's good. Yeah, I like him. Oh, one of the best announcers. And we were talking about a thing. I don't know if you remember this, but it was when, when you were with Eddie uh-huh. Gilbert, and they were doing some quiz thing. 
<laughs> and he kept giving away the answers, and I mean, it was like a shoot, like like you were driving him crazy. <laughs> Now that you, you just said that, that reminded me of that. That was one of the funniest things we ever did because I kept giving away the answers. I would just like pop, just say them out of the, you know, say them out of the blue. And he's like, ah, oh, Missy, that's the wrong one. <laughs> you know, I wish I had some of that stuff on tape. And then when me and Lawler did the maid for the day, and that was some of the funniest television stuff. And I took it to a, a um, one of those meet and greet things when fans have a dinner with you, and we played the tape there, and somehow somebody stole it or something, and I don't have the tape of it. But that was some of the best TV when we were there in Memphis, because we just got to do whatever we wanted. This was, I mean, we took over and did the whole NWO gimmick when we did it. NWO right. stole that from us, I mean, because we took over the whole show. It was so fun. And you, Lance just played off, played off of everybody so good. What are your thoughts going back? Like, uh, you know, on, on Eddie Gilbert, you know, you were married to him for many years, and Eddie had an untimely demise at a very young age, and you knew him real well. And, uh, you know, Eddie was like a total student of wrestling. A lot of people, you know, yes, on yesterday's show, you know, with all with Lance on, a lot there was there was a couple of mentions of uh, of Eddie Gilbert, you know, from different people who called in remembering angles Eddie did, and also regarding, um, you know, the fact that, how bad, you know, Eddie, and it would have been before you met, Eddie had already suffered the broken neck in the car accident before you met, and how much do you think that affected him, you know, afterwards? Well, I think what happened was is not just the broken neck in the car accident, but people forgot that when the accident happened, the steering wheel crushed his heart, and half of his heart was paralyzed, and they didn't think he was going to make it, not from the broken neck, but from his heart. So when I heard that he died of the heart attack, I mean, that just, you know, the only th I didn't think anything suspicious or anything like that. I thought it was bad. Plus, I think he had high blood pressure because I used to see him when people wouldn't do the right thing and he'd be screaming at the wrestlers in the back or he's doing the show, how his face would turn red and he'd start sweating. It was just like a cartoon character. So, you know, that that was a really, really awful and untimely thing because somebody that has that much talent and is so smart and I honestly believe if you would ever had the chance to book like WCW and gotten free reign any place, he he could turn anything around. He was just that smart. And I think what? Paul Lee steals a lot of his stuff, which is good. Yeah. What's I mean? What's what's your thoughts as far as you know? You were in WCW on and off for many many years, and it was one of these companies that had. And as a company, WCW probably had more potential being part of the time, you know, T TBS Empire and then later Time Warner of any company in history. And it never, I mean, it had its, its two-year run where it was pretty hot, but overall it never came close to what it should have been, and now it's in, like, a, a horrible state. I mean, like, as being there, you know, and Eddie was, Eddie was booking for a while there, and he had his well, he was there. Well, no, he was on the booking committee. On the committee, that's and right. That, on the committee. And which is horrible because, you know, everybody goes, oh, your idea is your idea is great, and then you walk out of the room and then people start backstabbing you because you're jealous. You know, it, it, you know, that didn't work. If he would have had the chance to book it himself, or just like maybe him and Dusty, they could have, they could have done some awesome TV, and, and it would have turned out good. They just don't have any direction, I think. I think there's too many chefs cooking is that it is that the term i guess too many chefs too many chefs yeah. in the kitchen because you know they start something they don't they don't finish it up they start an angle and there's no blow off there's no there's nothing to it i mean that's the only thing i can say they just they need to sit down and really plan i mean the wwf does they've got great storylines what are your thoughts as far as when you were there as far as storylines that, that were with you that they just like dropped in the middle or oh, they did all the around. time like the thing with rick flair and they had me go work with the Nasty Boys, which made absolutely no sense at all. I just, like, came out with them. You know, they don't they don't think things through. They don't think of a reason of why. And they just kind of, oh, okay, this is a good idea. We'll just do this. You know, I liked announcing. I didn't like it when they when I stopped announcing. So. What, was there anything that they ever did that to you, you just said, no, you know, that's that's too much? Um... No. Really? Not really, no. I remember one time, this is a good story, one time I got asked to do a hair match in the UWF. They wanted to shave your head? Yeah. I think I, 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 think I remember this sort of. Yeah, Ken Mantell came up to me and he's like laughing. He's trying to do it, like trying to work me, trying to get me to like do this match and blah, 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 blah. And then I told him what the price would be and then he never bugged me again. 
<laughs> I gave him like some outlandish kind of money that I go, yeah, you could shave my head. I don't care, but you're going to have to give me X amount of dollars. And then they never said anything. Now, probably with pay-per-view and stuff like that, they would have probably said yes to me. And then I would be walking around like with the freaking no hair. <laughs> but, but other than that, I mean, you know, they threw me in the water trough. I didn't know that was going to happen. I probably oh, would have said no to that, but I doubt that, that thing's Abdul the Butcher, yeah, right? Yeah, I doubt I would have said no. I mean, I didn't care. They didn't really do that many bad things or anything. What? What? Explain your like original start in wrestling. How you first got in in Dallas? Um, well, I uh, I was dating John Tatum at the time, and we had moved out there. He was he was working in Charlotte, and we moved out there. And um, David Manning saw me. I think we were up in like Lawton, Oklahoma, or something. He was like, "So, do you want to be a manager?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll do it." I don't, you know, I didn't know. And um, the next thing I know, we were sitting in Fritz's office trying to come up with a name for me. And um, they like my my real name. <laughs> so that's how it kind of started, and they came up with that. But I remember sitting around Fritz's dingy old office, and I was kind of born that day. And I think it all stemmed because Sunshine, you know, was a baby face, and they needed a heel to work with her, and she really didn't have a heel to work with her. And they just saw me, and they're like, oh, okay, we'll just, you know, we'll get this girl. Plus, it was good for Johnny because it gave Johnny a push. Yeah. He was oh, yeah. just, you know, working the middle of the card, you know, first match or second match. And, you know, I started working with him, and within a couple of months, we're like semi-main event at Reunion Arena. So it really helped him and gave him a push. You you, you and Elizabeth were really the ones that, I mean, Sunshine locally, but, I mean, nationally, it was you and Elizabeth were the ones in the in the 80s, and everyone, then all of a sudden, it just, like, blossomed. I don't know if that's the right word. Like, <laughs> last, last three years, they're, like, everywhere. I know, I can't believe it, and they just, and I don't understand, like WCW, they have so many come and go, come and go, they just, you know, they have they don't develop. They huh? don't develop a personality for any of them. Yeah, I know, they don't give them a chance. Yeah. You know, well, and then they try to have them. they good anyway, but other than that. And then they, they made a mistake also of trying to make, like, trying to have too, too many of them wrestle. Yeah, I know. You know, I don't think girls look good wrestling. Cat fighting's okay, but I don't really think they look good wrestling, except maybe Lita. She does, like, some awesome moves. But other than that, then they have that blonde Trish girl running around. She just doesn't look like a wrestler. She's just not, I mean. She's, she's not. Yeah, I mean, she's not. And then it's kind of like, you know, don't do something that you don't know what you're doing, even if you're kind of trained. She just doesn't look like it. And then, I don't know, to me it just looks I mean, guy, I, I don't know. I particularly, I don't like to see girls wrestle. But, you know, if girls want to roll around cat fight, I mean, I'm like, ooh, cool. You know? Mm -hmm. And if they haven't taken some, you know, great bumps in the meantime, that's even better. I think if, they're, if they know what they're doing and they're good at it, you know, but when, but when they're thrown in there, they're with no experience. It's like a guy with no experience. Like a, a guy who, who doesn't know how to wrestle out there wrestling on national TV, that's, that's yeah. going to look bad, Let me too. tell you what the worst thing was. I had to wrestle Kimona in a cage match. And let me tell you, this poor I know she's learning how to work, and she can work better, but let me tell you, this poor little thing. I mean, she doesn't weigh but maybe 90-something pounds, and I'm like, come on, work with me. And you know, so you got two green people in there trying to do a match. I mean, you know, it's like maybe six minutes. And that was it. But they, you know, the fans didn't want to see that. They just wanted us to see us roll around and hoping that a, a breast or something would pop out. Yeah. That's all they really cared about. I mean, I don't know about watching ladies wrestle. I don't know. To me, it just doesn't look feminine. Oh, and Cat Fight does. I don't know. I have no logic in that. So There's a, there's a, there's a couple things I want to bring up. Um, our phones coming in are not working, but we can call out. So what Mike, our producer, said that he would do is that if you email in a phone number... He will call you and get you on the show. So if you want to be on the show and talk to Missy, you can do it, even though you can't call in. We have a lot of emails already, and actually this question is being asked a couple of times. It was asked, asked to me many times, actually. There's two things, two questions about your career that I get asked the most, and we'll get to them right right away. Okay. The first, the first one is explain the chronology of, of in Mid-South Wrestling of your angle with A. Gilbert and John Tatum and the reality of what was going on with Eddie Gilbert and John Tatum and you as that angle was going on. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, we we did the merger of Hot Stuff and Hyatt International, and then uh, Eddie and I started 
you know, I never really talked to him before that, but then we started hanging out and we were doing the interviews like up at the barn and stuff like that. And that's when we'd sit around on the couch and read The Observer when you first started. I mean, I don't know if you'd first or been out a couple of years or something. But about two was, years. Yeah, about two years. But this is when you used to give all the good dirt. It was like the National Enquirer of the wrestling business. I mean, you would find out, I would find out if you were getting fired. You'd find out in the dirt sheet, in your sheet, before people would know. I mean, and who was sleeping with who. I mean, it was like the coolest. So we'd sit around and we'd read that, and everybody would would read it, and they probably don't want to admit that they were reading it, but they did. Well, but, everyone in Mid South in those days did. Yeah, I mean it was the best. Yeah. So anyway, not that it's not it's good now, I'm serious, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, we just I don't know what happened. It was just one night. John was we were all in Tulsa, and and one night Eddie had he was. He was out and he was drinking or something like that, and he came to the hotel. He came to our room, but John wasn't there, and he had passed out, and I had to get him to go back to his room. And, like, the next day I kept telling him, oh, we fooled around, we fooled around. And I was joking with him. He was like, oh, no, we didn't, did we? And I go, hey, listen, if we would have, you sh you would have remembered, buddy, okay? And mm -hmm. that's how it kind of started. And then when we started seeing each other, me and John broke up, and we were still doing the Hot Stuff and Hyatt thing, but then John was acting – you know, kind of mean towards me because, you know, we had broken up and he didn't like the whole idea. So I went to Ken Mantel and I said, Ken, you got to break us. You, got, you know, I don't want to work with John anymore. And he goes, we well, can't work with Eddie. Eddie's more of a manager. And I said, well, put me with anybody, somebody. Do, let's do something. So then they promised me and promised me, okay, we'll break you guys up. So then they did, we did the thing in the ring that um, Hot Stuff and Hyatt broke up and I went with John. And they tried to do that just to get me to go work with them so I wouldn't be around Eddie or something. But then I kept bugging them. So they said, okay. So like the two weeks later or like maybe a month later, they said, okay. So they started letting Eddie come out to the ring and, and woo me, you know, with the candies and then the chocolate each week and stuff like that. So it was kind of parallel going on at the same time. But I was really with Eddie. But for like about a couple, about three weeks or maybe a month, we, we couldn't be seen together, which was kind of hard, you know. Oh, in those days, because of the, the, the whole thing where you had to, yeah. yeah. I had to choose between the two, so I had to go with John and Jack and leave Sting and Steiner um, and Eddie in the ring. And then Eddie woos me back, and then I go with Eddie, and then I, I hit John with the person and leave with Eddie. But then they, they only had a couple of matches, because I think Ken Mantel was um, afraid to book them together. Yeah. You know, it just, scared you that John might try happen. to do something, shoot on him or something. Yeah. Nothing ever happened, though. But they were I, I, they were afraid of it, though. Yeah, they were really afraid of it. I mean, it was like probably the only angle in TV that was real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, looking back, you know, Mid-South Wrestling, you know, Watts' territory, you know, people have, like, romantic views and horrible views of it going back. You probably have a little bit of both, you know, between the travel and also the education, you know. It's like it's, it's like a double-edged sword. Well, I mean, looking back, I mean, those years working for Watts, what were your thoughts of, of that, that period, not the, the WCW period? Oh, gosh. It was exciting, and it was fun, because going from world class to going up there, I mean, we went from, you know, pretty good arenas, <clears throat> but to bigger arenas and a lot more people, and it seemed like a big step up. And the TV was a lot more exciting and things like that, but nothing beats my first year in world class, you know, if I really look back on it. so And there was a lot of traveling, too. My God, there was so much traveling. The guys that have started now do not know how good they have it. Any of the boys, I mean, I sound like an old-timer now, and I used to, like, make fun of the people that go, oh, well, back in my day it was like this. You know, now I sound like those kind of people. <laughs> but I'm serious. They don't really realize how easy they had it. I mean, if we had a 250-mile trip there and back, like a 500-mile trip in one day, that was like a night off. I mean, the, people don't realize how all the traveling that we did then. And you didn't have you didn't have days off hardly at all. No, you miss out. And your I mean, day off. Six a week. Yeah, let me tell you. Like every two weeks, you maybe get a day off, and that day you have to go to the cleaners. You got to you know go to the drugstore, go to the grocery store. You know, go do all the icky stuff. Go to the bank. You got to go do all the stuff. So you never really had a day off. And the other thing also is uh, is on Sundays and a lot of Saturdays you were doing double shots. Oh yeah, and on Christmas. <laughs> That's fun, Christmas and New Year's, especially Christmas in Louisiana, doing a double shot on Christmas, and the only thing that's open is a Waffle House to eat at. It's not now, fun. Now, shortly after that, uh, you were in the WWF very briefly. What, what, looking back, what's your thoughts on that 
period where they were going to make you Roddy Piper oh. with Missy's Manor, and it just didn't work out? You know what? I wish I would have gone there a few years later after I had some more experience of talking um, with a microphone and talking on television because I was so green. And I have those tapes, and I look back on them, and I just laugh because I am so horrible. I mean, I am so bad. I, I One of the first interviews I did, I asked uh, Jimmy Hart a question, him and um, Adrian Street, the late Adrian Street, and I asked him a question. You mean Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Adonis, right? Adrian Adonis, 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 I mean, yeah, Adrian Adonis, yeah. I'm sorry. And I Adrian Street's him, still among the living. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Oops, now there's going to be a rumor that I'm starting a rumor that he's dead or something. No, yeah. but... Um, so I ask Adrian Adonis a question, and I don't even hand him the microphone for him to respond. I mean, that's oh, how no. bad I was, okay? I mean, I was green. I've been in the business like a year maybe, or uh, over a year, a year and a half. And I never, you know, I did interviews in UWF and WCW, but never like holding the microphones. I had no clue what I was doing. So um, I just, I was really green, and it wasn't the right time. Mm hmm And you never really, you never really had another chance to go back there, did you? Well, kind of. I was going to go back and work WrestleMania 10, and then I was hoping maybe something could have came out of that. I was going to come out and do this um, sing Happy Birthday, like Marilyn Monroe in the white dress, because it was here at Madison Square Gardens. But then I filed the lawsuit against WCW. So when I called up there to, like, talk to somebody, they were like, Missy who? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that was that period where every... Everybody was, that was the period where everyone wrestling was scared to death of you. I know. Well, they still are. You know, I have this bad reputation of being so hard to work with and to deal with and this, that, and the other. But, you know, if you ask anybody that's actually worked with me, like maybe Ken Resnick when I worked in the AWS, he's like, I don't know where you got that reputation. You will go out of your way to work and do things and, you know. I, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. Maybe it's being a woman. I don't know. I can't keep blaming my gender on that. But, I don't know. I have maybe I maybe I just pissed off the wrong people or something. I don't know. What were your thoughts when Watch sold to Crockett and about what transpired over the next year or so with with working for Crockett where a lot of the guys from Mid South were you know, it was one of those promotional things where the new guys just never really got a fair sh shake. I mean, Sting ended up being a star out of this, but almost everybody else yeah, kind of lost their shuffle. Yeah, but you know what? Sting should have gone a lot farther. Sting could have been the next Hulk Hogan. We all, thought that in 80, in 88 that yeah, we all thought in 88 that he would. Yeah, we all thought in 88. I remember in 88 we all thought he was going to be the next big thing. Yeah, but yeah. they never used him right. That's a, that, there's a classic example right there of a guy not being used or pushed to his full potential. Because he could have been. He could have been the next great thing, and he, and he wasn't. Um, the only thing I remember is that I was just so happy when I was under contract to Watts, and I was wanted to go to the WWF. Watts wouldn't let me out of a contract, so I was just happy when Crockett bought the place because he said you could get out of your contract. And then after I left WWF and had to go back there and, like, beg for my job back, you know, <laughs> wasn't that much fun. But, you know, he gave me a job back there, but, you know, it was. It was kind of the guys in the UWF felt like they were the stepchildren because the guys in the NWA at the time were getting to ride on private jets and... Um, you know, they were just, they were treated a lot better. And then suddenly, you know, our titles don't really mean anything. And, you know, they just kind of, they, instead of keeping it two separate companies, he absorbed it into one. You know, and he had everyone thinking that it was going to be two separate companies. And there was going to be a promotion versus promotion angle right. down the road, which, which never really got which off the ground really, at all. Yeah, they never really did. And he could have done that, and it would have been so good. They never did that. You know? Yeah. We'll talk to Dusty about that some sometime. Yeah. We're going to have Dusty on the show, really, on the 29th, which should be pretty well, interesting. Well, you know what? When you see Dusty, will you, please, will you please give him my phone number, too? Because I want him. He He's one of the be best guys. I mean, I love him to death, and he always did stuff with me and gave me a chance, even when other people were like, especially Watts, when Watts came into WCW, like, mm, don't use her, blah, blah, blah. But Dusty always is good to me, and I want him to do a quote for my book for the back cover. You know, because we've mm -hmm. worked together for so long. So when you talk to him, please give him my phone number. Okay. Thank we'll you. We'll do that. I also want to mention, I just, we just did that UFC commercial. Which do you Remember Paul Barlins? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, Taz should be nice to me. Taz should be my friend. Because the only reason why Paul Barlins even did this, you know, tapped out to Taz, because Paul Barlins is like three times the size of Taz. I mean, I'm bigger than Taz. But other than that, 
Paul Garland tapped out to him only because I was, like, really, really nice to him. And I did that for Paulie because Paulie was like, Missy, you got to go be nice to the big goof. He's got a crush on you. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, things I do for this business, you know, for the, for the, for the fans. So, you know, I, I like, my body, my body was sacrificed to the good of this business. <laughs> Nobody knows that story. Huh? No, nobody knows this story. I mean, my body was sacrificed for the good of this business, for the fans, and I just get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> and Taz is not even nice to me. He's like the meanest person on earth. <laughs> and because that guy, he was not. He would have not. He would have not. He didn't want to do it. And I mean, I was on the phone with him. I was with him. I was talking to him. Blah 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 blah. You know, well, he, he, he didn't really nice, know. nice. So he would do it. He didn't really know what he was getting into. Now I know. What do you think Paul you know, sent me in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know what hit him. <laughs> Next thing he knows, he's tapping out to a midget. <laughs> six, six, tapping out to a midget. Ah, oh, Missy got there. <laughs> Missy didn't <seem> to do it. <laughs> See, I don't, get, I don't get any of the recognition that I should. Oh, my God. No, but, yeah, what, okay, what were you going to say about the UFC? I'm sorry. We got off on my... No, 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 no. We were just, I just, I, right, right before the... Right, during the commercial break, they did a commercial for tonight's UFC, and it just reminded me of well, well, Paul remember, Barlins. Remember when I was out in San Francisco doing that autograph session and he came there? You remember you yeah, were there? That's, that's exactly what way I remember. He me around like a puppy dog. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And I was, like, looking at you like, what is that with this guy? Yeah. Poor thing. Yeah, with, uh, what was that guy's name? Was it M Camacho? Hector Camacho was there? Oh, yeah, Hector, um, Hector, Hector Macho Camacho. Yeah. Right? Is that yeah. right? And yeah. Jason Giambi. Jason Giambi, who became a big-time baseball star. I know. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So now, um, did you did you ever, like, get a chance to travel overseas as far as, um, you know, going on any overseas is, Oh, for world class. Yeah, for um, WCW. I mean, not WCW. What am I talking about? World class. For Von Eric. For yeah, the Von, Von Eric. Right. What's, uh, what was that like? It was awesome. It was so cool. I mean, they sold out the same, like, huge soccer stadium, like, ten nights in a row. And then the la it was, like, in Haifa. And then the last night we were in Tel Aviv in, like, a big stadium. But it was awesome. It was amazing just going over there. I mean, it was and plus, this was back then. This was like in the middle of the '80s, and they really didn't have television on over there. They had movies, but the only television, American television, that they got was like NBA basketball and the Von Erichs wrestling. So they told one of the guys told me. I think they either lived in Lebanon. I think it was Lebanon at the time. He said on Friday nights you could bomb the city because everybody they always had problems with the lighting and I guess um, the power going out. People would take the batteries out of their car and hook them up to make sure their TVs wouldn't go out so they could watch the Von Erichs wrestling. And they said everybody was in their house on Friday nights at eight o'clock. You could bomb the city because no one was on the streets. They were all watching wrestling. And I ask you about um, the Von Erichs and everything. You were there right. At, I guess it was like right after their heyday, but you know they were still. A real big deal when you were first breaking in in Dallas wrestling. It was um, it was a situation kind of similar to what WWF kind of is maybe right now, but only on a regional basis. Where it was like, you know, the real in thing with teenagers going to the matches, and the Von Erichs were like, you know, idols, and women would go to the matches, and you know, it was kind of an atmosphere that, you know, wasn't duplicated that many different periods in wrestling. No, not at all. I mean, this family. I mean, I think Car David was so smart, and Carrie had the looks and the body, and and. You know, the father built the company from, you know, what, I mean, from really basically nothing, I don't think, and, and to like a big empire. I mean, Fritz was a really smart, smart man. I mean, I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. People always say, you know, I think it's just tragedy that the whole thing that happened in his family was, there's only one left. Yeah, Kevin. You know? I mean, they were like the few, they were like, I mean, you go 1983, 84, they were the future of wrestling. It just, it just didn't pan out. I know. I mean, Carrie, Carrie Von Eric, I mean, I would, you know, he's probably one of the three, four biggest stars in the business with Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, and probably no one, probably right with them. Oh, definitely. I mean, do you know the guy that cuts my hair? He's from, he's from Israel. And, you know, we were, um, just a month or so ago, we were talking about that, and I said something about wrestling, and the first thing out of his mouth was the Von Erics, because that's what he grew up watching. 
you know, oh, Israel, Israel yeah. was the Von Erichs, you know, and then I said, oh, yeah, I'm in wrestling, so we said, oh, my God, what about Kerry Von Erich and Kerry, you know, so, I mean, that's all, I mean, you know, he didn't ask about Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, he's asked about Kerry Von Erich, I mean, I don't know, I doubt he watches wrestling now, but I'm just saying, growing up, that's, those are the biggest stars. Yeah, this is from um, Sean Lockhart, who said, what are your thoughts of Max Payne and Mick Foley? I you remember... They did an interview about your lawsuit. Mick Foley, in, in many ways, that might have been the beginning of the end of his WCW tenure. Oh, yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. What did he say? I just remember this interview where he just goes, you know, like, hey, Missy, you know, like maybe something like get as much of Ted's money as he can or well, I'm rooting for you, oh, which was yeah. not the, which was not the political... That. That was not the political thing to be saying when you were under contract to WCW at that point yeah, in time. it wasn't, but you know what? It's kind of good because look how his life turned out. And look where oh, he is at today. You know, yeah. if he had stayed in WCW, he'd have been beaten up just as bad, if not worse. I and know. He'd and he would have anywhere gotten... near the uh, anywhere near the money. Oh, exactly. And he and his body, he'd probably still be taking those crazy bumps, and probably not being able to, you know, sleep at night or anything else. So he's really lucky. And his book was awesome too. Yeah, it was. To say that. Yeah, that opened the door for every everyone. <laughs> and, spe and speaking of, yeah, everyone. And speaking of Max Payne and McFoley, well, when we had to work against them and they had to kiss me, that was gross. But other than that, they're, they're good guys. <laughs> Matt, whatever happened to Max Payne? I don't know. But that whole thing got me in trouble because I remember when I went and told, I forget who the boss was at the time. It was like over Bischoff's head. And he was asking me. Schiller, was it Schiller? No, it was no. Schiller. Bob Dew? Bob Dew? Yeah, Bob Dew, I think. That idiot. And um, so I, he, I remember him asking me, how do you think the clash went? And I said, well, I mean, honestly, I go, you know, they were in a non-title match, and on the replay, they should have showed, because I guess our match went over or something, they had to cut, they should have shown on the replay them getting the count after the bell rang instead of the two big ugly guys kissing the blonde girl. I said, that would sell more tickets to the people thinking that these two guys can beat the guys in a non-title match, you know, for the pay-per-view. Right. And I think I got in trouble for that because I expressed that I, you know, I was smart. <laughs> it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Gilbert taught you too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I got in trouble, you know. <laughs> he, he taught you um, enough to get, to get in logic. trouble. You know what? Oh, that's it. Oh, my God, the girl has logic. Oh, she. Uh, we, we, we must get rid of her. <laughs> She's too smart. <laughs> I want to make mention of this as far as current wrestling. This is on yesterday's WCW show. Uh, the Cat did not win the commissionership. Um, it was the ring announcer announced in German that the match was for the commissionership, but he wasn't supposed to do that. He did it on his own, and apparently uh, that's that's where the whole problem is, and that's where the misunderstanding comes in. So, so the Cat didn't win the commissionership, and I don't know who, I don't know about the tag team titles. I guess we'll find out Monday when we watch the TV. I guess the Boogie Nights have them. I don't know. The uh, <laughs> typical WCW. What can I say? What What in the last couple, in the last three years or so in wrestling, really, especially the last two years, where wrestling really hit big? I mean, what were your thoughts, having been around it for so many years, and you know, you've been through some ups and down periods where it really, with Steve Austin and everything, just kind of like, you know, mushrooms. Right. Um, what have I liked in the last few years? Or No, I mean, what did you think when all of a sudden this thing got, you know, so big and Vince got, like, so ridiculously rich? <laughs> yeah, I was like, God, where's my... <laughs> I want some money. No, um, <laughs> no I, I just was thinking it was amazing. I was watching and I was thinking how he changes with the times. You know, wrestling always has, like, a period and then the down period, and I think it's because they keep doing the same thing over and over, but then the times change, and then they finally figure out, hmm, we got to keep up with the times. And now they're doing all that soap opera stuff that I love, and I don't get to watch, and I'm so depressed about, but um, I just I thought it was cool. I mean, I love wrestling. I'm not bitter about it or anything like that at all. I mean, it made me a great living for a long, long, long time. So, you know, I hope, I just wish that there was more places for people to work. Yeah. You know, well, that's... and get the training because, you know, these guys, just going to a wrestling school doesn't prepare you to go out there and work and work in front, you know, and, and be good. It doesn't prepare you. That takes a long time to do that. Even if you've got natural talent, like Buff Bagwell, he had natural talent, but it still took him a while before you can, before you can get really good. And it's a shame because now they don't give you a chance. If you're not over in two weeks, they find somebody else. Now you knew him before he was a wrestler, right? You did you you were did you were you involved in getting him into wrestling? I got him into the wrestling business. 
Okay. I'm the so- one that realized Buff was the stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. When I went to go move into an apartment complex, he was washing his car. And I told the lady, I was like, I don't care what apartment I want, but I want the one right beside his. So I ended up getting his, <laughs> moving in right beside him, and we became friends. He had a girlfriend at the time, so you know, there was nothing going on. But we became friends, and then um, I called I called Joe Petticino and Bonnie Blackstone, and I asked them, you know, who's training wrestlers? Because this is before, you know, wrestling schools and stuff like that. So then I called the guy up, and I kind of knew who he was, and I was like, look, I'm going to send somebody down to you, but don't work him on the price, and we want to charge him like $10,000 or some you know, crazy amount of money. So then Mark went down there and he started working that Georgia area and then he and then he went to Global and I took his tape to Jim Barnett at WCW and they gave him a tryout and they hired him. So. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that whole period and everything. He looks great now. Yeah, he's, he's got he's got he's got mega, he's got mega heat. <laughs> oh, does he? Oh yeah, because he he gets in fights all the time. Well, not so much that, but he he did like an, an interview where he kind of like. You know, there's like different cliques, and uh, you know, one of the things with most of the guys in WCW, as you probably well know, is a lot of them think that they don't get a fair shot, and, and he's one of the people who thinks that. But you know, his friends, you know, he's friends with the guys who've been there for a long time, like Luger and Sting and everything. And so he was just kind of saying, like, you know, like he kind of talked about himself as a talent, and he he mentioned uh, Hugh Morris or General Rection as C talent, and it got a lot of heat by mentioning the guy as C talent because you know he he works hard too. You yeah. Know? So. They actually did it. They're actually trying to do an angle around that, but I don't know. It was one of those things where you know what? You know how sometimes on TV they'll do an, something so inside on the interview that nobody gets it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what they did on Thursday they, or or Wednesday on Thunder. Is they did an interview where they were like kind of talking about that interview, but they didn't want to specifically reference it. So they they kind of beat around the bush, and it ended up with this thing where, like, for a couple of thousand people who knew what he was talking about, they would get it, and like everybody else watching on TV going. What are him and Mike Tanay talking about? Yeah, I know. See, I don't understand why they do that. You know, they do. They, you know, they they do a lot of this stuff just for your benefit. You know, I'm serious. Well, I, 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 I mean, remember. They want to stump the Meltzer guy. They want to stump the Observer guy. Oh, they do. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever told you that, but yeah. it's like that. You would hear them going, "Yeah, well, we're gonna." You know, we're going to do a swerve because the guys in the sheets already. Because I remember one time they get, hey, you know, that Meltzer reported so-and-so got the belt, so we're not going to give it to him tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. So, I mean, it's crazy they do that stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, so, the, you know, the, you know, the 5,000 or 10,000 people that read that, this is back before the computers and stuff, you're going to change it because of that? What about the other, you know? Millions, hundred thousand, yeah, millions of people or whatever watching. So that's what I that's what I used to say. And the other thing is, is like when they would do the things where they would swerve like that. The, all it did was they made their product not make sense. I know exactly. Because you know what we were looking for was the logical conclusion of the angle, and they would go, "What we'll do is we'll swerve them," <laughs> and sort of like. So then the rest of these people are going like, "Well, we wanted to see these two guys meet." We've been building up this feud for months, so now we're going to make them a tag team without ever even having the match. Right, it's I like, know, well, I know. What, what did that accomplish? They do that all the time. That's why, I mean, I guess in the Bagwell thing came off like that, too. It's the same thing with what, what, um, Kevin Nash. He's going out there talking all kinds of stuff. And the only reason why I know that is because I read in your sheet. I don't know what all that makes sense. Oh, well, he's like always talking about uh, Scott Hall, which, you know, and if the company, and I guess they never did bring Scott Hall back because they just fired him. <laughs> <laughs> and they spent months, I mean, they did the greatest job of building up to Scott Hall's return. I mean, he would have gotten a huge pop coming back, but then they fired him. And, I, you know, and it, you know, there's reasons why they fired him. But the thing is, if they were going to fire him and they weren't going to bring him back, they should have never, like, built up his return so big. Right, because and it wasn't even like, going, where is he? Yeah, so everyone's like Scott. The return of Scott Hall is like the next big thing in WCW, except that you know he's not coming back. Right. Which is, again, that's that's, that's one of the many problems with WCW. When what did, we you know, just like, don't have enough hours to sit here and bag on them and tell them all the problems that they have, Dave. That's well, the hope, hope, hopefully they'll turn it around. Although I don't know when. <laughs> I, hope it's, I hope it's soon because for their for their own sake, because yeah, it's a tough business right now. Vince got. You know, Vince got the thing so up that nobody can compete with him, and that's, that's the reality of what's, what's happened in wrestling in the last two years, I think. I know, I know. You know, he's just he's got that TV production, and that, and, the, and he's got, you know, a great group of wrestlers. And, you know, the storylines aren't as strong now as they were a couple of months ago, but, you know, you compare them to everybody else, and they're still, they're still stronger than what anybody else has. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. You know, he's got the money. Everyone, want, everyone wants to be there. They're all excited, you know. 
You never, you never got to go to Japan, did you? Nope. Uh, wow. All I that know, time. I wish I would have. But I didn't know how to wrestle, so they didn't really use girls over there unless you know how to wrestle. They do a little bit now, but not a lot. You know, but um, it's still in its infancy there. You know, like when it comes to the the women, it's, they're probably about 1985 right now. You know, they've got the ballets and the ballet feuds, but it's pretty bad, like, compared to, like, in the United States, I mean, they've advanced a lot more and done a lot more storylines with it. Right, you, right. You wanted to go there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I always have. Yeah. I thought it would be the coolest thing. I always wanted to go, and I never got a chance to go. Were there ever any things that you maybe you had an opportunity to do stemming from wrestling that, like, maybe WCW wouldn't allow you to do? Mm. You know, as far as, I don't know, outside of wrestling? Like, I don't know if it's acting or anything like that, or no? No. <laughs> no, I wish. Um, no, not really. Um, I, w I was going to do Playboy, and then they said no. Um, you were too many years too early, because everybody did it later. I know. See, yeah. I and, and, made, and made money, too. And made money, too. I know. They were going to give me some good money, though, back then. I mean, it's probably not as much as what... I don't know. It was, it was pretty good, though. I mean, it's a lot more than what I was getting paid at WCW, let me put it like that. And um, then they, they took it to the board, and they said, no, I couldn't do it. And it was just going to be topless, too. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't even going to be, like, you know, doing anything. But that was probably the only thing. And then when they wanted me to be a tag team with the Nasty Boys, I thought it would be, I voiced my opinion that I thought I should go with the Hollywood Blondes, which would be Tillman and Steve Austin. And they didn't put me with them. And they ended up taking the belts off them and giving them to the Nasty Boys. That was really weird, that Tillman and Austin thing. I know, oh. but it was good. They had a, it was a good team. No, they were they were great, and then they broke they broke. That was one of the most mystifying things because it was during a down period, and it was one of the few things that was really clicking. Mm -hmm. And then they broke them up. And I mean, Tillman, like for the next two years, pretty much did nothing until he came up with that gimmick to save his career, and and ended up, you know, I mean, he ended up making himself a celebrity out of it. But, but you know, I mean, it was just. You know, him and Austin really had a lot of chemistry, tremendous chemistry. They did. Together, really. They had tremendous chemistry together, and and they kind of like did that all on their own. They, yeah. There was all no their own. help from anybody. There was no nobody behind them pushing them. I mean, they kind of did that on their own, and I thought for sure. I mean, they would put me with the Hollywood Blondes, but they didn't. They put me with the Nasty Boys. <laughs> this is from someone named Ron B, who says, "Please, please, please ask Missy this." I don't know what it means, so if I get into trouble, it's out of ignorance. It just says, Missy, how is cat stuff lately, and do you want a Diet Coke? <laughs> I don't know what any of it means. Tell them, cat stuff is the hottest. And as a matter of fact, I'm drinking a Diet Coke right now, but the next time I see him, I want a really good cold one. Oh, okay. And what are your thoughts on Stephanie McMahon? You know what? When she first when she first came out, I'm thinking, oh, she's so dowdy. She wears the ugliest shoes. I mean, if my daddy had all those millions of dollars, I'd be dressing in nothing but freaking Versace and Moschino. I mean, I'd be tearing up this avenue. But you know, I thought she was I thought she was a horrible actress, but now she's gotten really good. She's a great bad girl, and it just goes to show. Just because you you know grew up in a wrestling family doesn't mean you automatically have talent. She's a lot better than Shane. You I think, think so? Oh yeah. Really? I, think, I, 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 I don't think so, good. but a lot of people a lot of people a lot of people have said that. Oh yeah, I I, I think she's I, great. She's a great bad girl. Very I great bad girl. She, I think Shane, you know, considering you know, he's the son of the promoter, I think he's phenomenal. Because there's so many I how many yeah, but come sons, on. If he if he wasn't the son of if he wasn't the son of the promoter, he wouldn't have been on there that long. No, you're right, but how many sons of the promoters have you seen that you know, like I mean, especially with Shane, he's not even really a trained wrestler. But when he goes in the ring, I mean, he's a tremendous wrestler for a guy who's not a wrestler. Yeah, you know well, I mean, is. yeah, you're right. I mean, he takes some great bumps, but look at Vince. Well, Vince, Vince does some the, crazy stuff, too. I know, Vince's stuff's a lot more careful than Shane's. Yeah, I mean, well, he does, I mean, I mean, Vince, I mean, I, Vince is a lot older, too, so. He's a lot older. I, I give Vince credit for considering... With all that money, he didn't need to cut his forehead like he did on those matches. Yeah, or I was, that, didn't he come off like the top of the of the cage or something down on the table? Yeah, I mean, I mean it was, what is he it taking? Was, Crazy. It was it was padded, but I mean, I, I mean, underneath, but I mean, you know what though? That was like I would never do that. I would never do that too. They, they come to me, I'd be like, I don't think so. I'd be I mean, like, he, uh -uh. he's in his 
He's in his 50s, and he doesn't need to do it. <laughs> I know, exactly. He doesn't need to do it, and he does it. He's yeah. sacrificing his body for the business, for the fans out there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he would do I don't, I don't. think he would do that one again. Yeah, maybe he would. I don't know. But I think Stephanie's really good. I think she plays a great bad girl. She's such a good snot. I mean, you just... She's really, really good. And that whole thing when they did the thing about Hunter marrying her, and every, I thought that was the funniest st- stuff. The Hunter oh, the- marriage, and then and then <laughs> and then what's his name? Kurt Angle going, I just want to be friends. Why can't I just be friends? And then he's like scamming on her. Really? That that was some great stuff. You know the um the Kurt Angle stuff was great, but they I'll tell you what though they they had it great for about six seven months, and then when it came time to pull the trigger, they totally blew it. Think, well, I missed that because I don't get to see it. Oh, yeah, because you haven't seen the show. I mean, they had that whole thing built up so well, and then when they, the, the big payoff, like, they never really, they had one match on a pay-per-view that was, I mean, it wasn't like it was bad, but it was disappointing, and then it was like they just backed right out of it. And, I mean, the whole key was is that, you know, she had to ditch Hunter, or Hunter had to ditch her, one or the other, and then Hunter... Well, who is she Hunter, with now? Well, she hasn't, she hasn't been on TV in the last week to ten days. Oh, okay. Um, they but did who was she walking out to the ring with? She hasn't been on. She was okay. The deal was that she was married to Hunter, but she had a business relationship with Angle. So, and Angle wasn't even really trying to scam on her anymore. Like they yeah, did a deal. Right. That's some that's some sneaky business right there. Okay, but sneaky was, business. But see, that's why Helmsley was turning into such a tremendous baby face because every guy probably knew this idea of this guy trying to pretend to be. The friend of their girlfriends who deep down is trying to get her in the sack, you know what I mean? Right, right. That's so why it I was like it. It was like a tremendous thing that everybody could relate to, but then they blew it at the end because they it, it ended up where it, where it just went nowhere. Um, you know what I mean? The, the thing they needed to do, she needed to, to double cross Hunter, or Hunter needed to kick her to the, if Hunter had like but like dumped her in a very dramatic him way. The curb, oh my God, he would have been the biggest baby face. The biggest baby face. Or if she would have dumped him, it would have kind of hurt him, but she would have been the greatest heel in the world, and so would an angle. With her would have been a tremendous heel, and there would have been a different kind of heat. Hunter trying to get revenge. Either one right. would have been would have been effective, and they ended up doing neither. And I think that's where everyone's kind of disappointed. Now it's just kind of muddled, and well, didn't you no think re- Stephanie's writing some of the stuff now? Yes, yeah, Stephanie's writing a lot. Of, you know, she's she's one of the key writers on the show. See, that's awesome because you know what I I said this years ago. I said they'll never let a woman write any of the stuff. But I mean, she's the owner's daughter, so I guess she's got kind of an end to write the stuff. But I mean, if she's not any good, Vince is not going to let her keep doing it. So, she's well, gotta, it's not she's like gotta it. have she's got to you know be doing something good. No, it's not like it's bad. The problem is, is that like she's the only one of the writing staff that really has wrestling knowledge. I mean, it's like they they hire people that are like comedy writers or TV um, show writers, and they bring them in. And you know, like writing a TV show and writing professional wrestling are two. Entirely different things, but they'll get these guys that are, are TV writers from real shows like Conan O'Brien, and then they'll have like one wrestling person, which is Stephanie's role, to kind of formulate it and make it like make sense in wrestling. So, um, you know, they really don't have. That doesn't you know, make and, sense. Why don't they? I don't know why they do that. When, when they have they have Jim Ross up there, and they have you know that's. Stupid. I mean, Vince. You know, you know, Vince is overseeing, and I'm sure Ross has input. But you know, like the thing is, is, is and this is one of the things that's going to be a big challenge for them next year, and it already is a challenge now. Is that all those key people are so overworked with? You know, there's, you know, Vince is trying to start his own football league now. Oh, I know. I mean, that's, boy, it's going to be quite an undertaking. Is Jesse you know, Ventura really going to be doing the announcing? Yeah, Jesse's going to be the announcer for the football, which is hilarious after all these years when Vince fired him 10 years ago as an announcer, and now, now Vince called him back, and, and you know Vince is paying through the nose to get Jesse. You oh, know. Oh, yeah. You know, they asked Jesse, I guess it was yesterday, they asked him, like, how much he was making, and Jesse said, it's nobody's business. So. It's enough that he'd get heat for it, <laughs> for that, oh, yeah. that answer. Oh, my God, he's the governor. I love that. Jesse. How would you like working with Jesse? I loved it. Let me tell Did you him? something. I've never voted in my life, but if Jesse wants to run for president, I will go and I will vote. Well, you've got to smack down your vote. <laughs> I, would, I would only smack down if Jesse would run, because he used to always talk about politics and stuff like that. And I, I have, I have a very good line, but it's going in my book, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stooge it off here because it's kind of dirty too, and I'm, I'm sure I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. But um, I, I really like Jesse. I think he's smart, and I think it was the most awesome thing that he became the governor of Minnesota. Because now I can at least say I know a governor. I guess I can too, but yeah. but I know a governor. I know a governor doesn't like me. Uh, oh, he doesn't <laughs> like you? Oh no, no, not at all. Oh. <laughs> I think you have more enemies than me, Dave. 
Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I think I do. Okay. Realistically. I mean, because I think that your enemies kind of kind of went away. Mine are... Uh, I don't know, know if you're listening to people off each and every week. <laughs> I, I am, but you know what? It's it's not like it was It's not like it was 15 years ago, that kind of enemy stuff. Yeah, I mean, that whole thing is like, beat you up and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember you used to call me up, but like when I would well, there be like a card coming to the area, and you'd go stay away from this person and this person. <laughs> I remember one time, one time you called me up and go, I'm serious, Dave, I'm serious. Stay, you, I don't want to mention the guy's name, especially since he's going to be on the show in the next two weeks. <laughs> Maybe when he comes on, I'll bring it up. But um, but uh, you, I remember one time you called me up, and it was just like, no, I'm serious, because it was like one of Eddie's friends. It was just like, stay away from this guy. Promise me you're going to stay away from him. And I go, okay, yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> just worried about you. Yeah. Yeah, they take that stuff serious. Yeah. Who was the one that wanted to beat up Mark Madden so bad? Oh, Bruno San Martino? Or Bruno one San Martino or Ole Anderson? Maybe Bill Watts? <laughs> Jim, I mean, Jim Cor- was it not? Actually, actually, Cornette probably Cornette, more than anyone. That's who it was. It was Cornette. Cornette. Yeah, Cornette, Cornette, the two ones he hates are, are uh, Mark Madden and Vince Russo. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. I think Russo more than Madden right now, though. Oh, okay. At least he's gotten over the Madden stuff. Mm, he doesn't get over anything. Oh, really? No, I don't I really think I so. learned from him. Cornette has this really bad problem when he goes through drive throughs like a Burger King and stuff like that. He'll scream at the people, you know, that that's taking the order. And he doesn't realize they can spit on your hamburgers and stuff. So I've always been nice. Ever since I found that out, I've gone out <laughs> of my way to be nice to those people that are making your food because they can do some really, you know, they can drop your hamburger on the floor and serve it to you. Yeah. See? Jim, yeah. Jim... Jim is, you know, Jim is like the greatest guy, but he's got a temper. I know. When he's got a temper, he's not the greatest guy. Luckily, I mean, like, luckily he and I have never had any problems as far as, but, but I mean, you know, I mean, everyone knows the story. I mean, you know, geez, you know, bashing in cars with baseball bats and, he, you know, that thing in, uh, that thing in, like, what city were they in? In Knoxville where he came in there and they got, you know, that big mace thing with the baseball right, bats. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's some crazy stuff. And yeah. I like, guess who I saw like a couple months ago, Sweet Stan Lang. We had him on the show. He was awesome on the show. Let me tell you something. He looks better now than he ever did in wrestling. Really? Yes. Yes. He's. Where, where did you bump into him at? Um, he was up here. They were doing that ESPN two, the boat racing. Oh, because he's in boat racing. Boat yeah. Race. yeah. 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 He um, hey, he's pretty fun. He's pretty funny and everything like that. Real funny. I know. We saw him at. At the, uh, he worked for Cornette for, at the Louisville show when they did like a Louisville reunion thing, you know, for all the old USWA guys. What was your, what was your favorite territory to work? I mean, forget about money, just most fun. Um, a uh, world class. World yeah. class at the beginning? Yeah, world class. Any reason, any reason why? Uh, maybe it's because it was short trips and things like that, but I think it's because I was just starting out and it was new and everything. It was like still, I was still like the little kid getting to be in the circus. And it wasn't a business to me. I mean, I would have done it for like, you know, 25 bucks a night because I loved it. But now, I think you... when it started to become a business to me and a job, that's when I was like, ugh. Now, you were a fan. When did you start being a fan? Because you were a fan long before you got in the business, right? No, I, I didn't see. I mean, I knew. I grew up in Florida, and I knew, you know, who Dusty Rhodes was, of course, because you can't grow up in Florida not knowing who he was. But I didn't really watch wrestling until one night I came. I was coming upstairs, and my dad was flipping channels, and I, I can, I remember this vividly because I was like, I saw the Freebirds on TV, and they were putting a baby bonnet on Terry Gordy's head. So that's Georgia Championship Wrestling, yeah, Georgia I remember Championship that. Championship Wrestling on TBS, yeah. and I was, I was like 17 years old. And I remember I made my dad stop the TV, and I sat down and watched it. And I fell in love, and I was like, oh, my God, this stuff is so fun. And that's when I became a fan and started watching him. So that's, I'm guessing, 80-ish, maybe, right around 1980. I think like 1981, maybe? Maybe 81, yeah. Yeah, I think it was like 81. And you started in, like, what, wrestling 85? 85. Yeah. So now, when you first, so, so like, in, again, going to Dallas, so you were in Dallas with John Tatum at that point. Right. And Sunshine just didn't have an opponent? Yeah, she was a baby, you know, they switched her baby face and stuff, and she really was just kind of not doing anything, because it's a baby face, and you don't have a heel to work with, you're just kind of, like, out there. Yeah. So, and it was David Manning's idea to um, hire me. But what mm-hmm. happened was, really, is that I had heard probably in your, no, it wasn't your street sheet, because I hadn't read it yet, but 
Somehow I'd heard that WWF wanted a girl, so I'd sent him pictures, and George Scott had called me, and this is when I was living in Dallas. And I think John Tatum told, like, Rick Hazard and David Manning that George Scott called me, and I'm going to go up there and work, and it was for a ballet for Randy Savage. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they really ended up got that. his wife. Well, now I know why he got his wife, because he wanted two paychecks, because I heard he's really, really cheap. So, <laughs> um, But he got his wife to do it instead. But they, they had called me, because I had sent my pictures up there. And so I think that's one of the things that they said, hey, we'll get the, you know, we'll get her to work here. Hmm. Wow. Now, did you ever do any, um, any like, modeling stuff before then, or no? A little bit. I did some calendars and things like that, but nothing really. Yeah? Yeah, nothing really. I had signed up for college, as a matter of fact, when I was out in Texas and never went, because I started in wrestling, so I didn't get to go. So you're making up for it now? Yeah, making up for it now. So, so now, what are, you, what, what are you basically studying right now? Well, I'm a psychology major, and um, I have a year to go. And then, you know, I was I was a med tech, and then I was a biology major, and then just, like, totally freaked out. I, you know, math is my worst point. So I thought I got into psychology because I thought, ooh, I won't have any math. I didn't know I had to do three semesters of statistics, which is, like, the same thing, just about. Nice but um, I don't know. Um, I graduate next December, and I don't know what I want to do when I graduate. I don't wow. Know. I don't know. Maybe go to law school. I don't know. Wow. Yep. That's that's interesting. Did you talk to Kim Ward at all? No, I haven't in a long time. Oh, okay. I just talked to him a couple of days ago, actually. Oh, okay. How's he doing? Yeah. He's doing pretty good. The Bengals stink. <laughs> <laughs> so it's tough for him. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What's, um, I just think, as far as, um, oh, I can't really think of uh, any of the other things as far as going on. What, you know, as far as, like, with, um, with Eddie Gilbert and everything, is there anything, like, in hindsight you want to say about him? You know, I just think that I know that if he would have been, like, two inches taller, he could have been a world champion because he was that smart, he was a great talker, and he was a great worker. And, you know, he grew up in a wrestling family, and I don't think he ever got to... I don't think he ever got to use his smartness, you know, like, for the booking and everything like that. That he could have. I just don't think he was ever in the right place at the right time to get to do that. Well, everything was always so volatile. Yeah, and think? I just, I just think it's, I, it's a shame because there's so many people out there that have such great talent, and they just don't ever, they don't get that break. And it's these other people that get the break. I mean, but I, I'm sure that's like that in everything. I'm sure there's like a zillion great actors out in Hollywood that never get that, you know, big break. But no, it's, it's even like wrestlers. I mean, you know. I mean, there are, there are guys that are really good that we know are really good that, you know, just aren't in the right place at the right time. Right. And, and, and then some guys were just, and then some guys were just lucky. Right. I you mean, know, yeah. they're just lucky. And then they, they make it. You know, and it is, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's like, you know, Rena Merrill. I mean, nothing against her, but she was very lucky to be in the right place at the right time during the right wrestling boom. Let me tell you and, something. That girl, if I would have had a quarter of her, of her television time or getting over like her, I would have been, like, out of my mind. It would have been the most exciting and happy. I mean, I, I would have been, it would have been so crazy. I mean, she just doesn't know how lucky she had it. I mean, she, no, I, said, she I, don't really, I don't really think she does, because I don't think really wrestling was that important to her. So I don't, and she doesn't really know a lot about the business. So I don't think she really realizes what she had, what she let go. I think she might now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe been, now. She's been gone because, like, her star is down and no one really... You know, it's amazing. I don't think that... You know, we all knew it was going to happen, but I don't think she had any clue. Was that when she left that TV, how... I mean, she went from being major, major celebrity to nobody. You know, it was going to happen in, like, six months. And I don't right. think that she, I think that she didn't realize with all that ad adulation she had when she left that that, that was the inevitability of what was going to happen. Wrestling fans, you know, they're going to move on to something new. Right. I mean, maybe she thought that she could go and do acting. If she would have been a good actress, maybe she could have. Didn't she try to do a television show? Yeah, I don't think it ever really got off the ground. I mean, she's done things, but I mean, nothing that's ever really amounted to anything. Right. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. you got to have talent to back it up, you know. But to be in wrestling, it's just like being in the right place at the right time. She just doesn't know. I mean, maybe now she knows how lucky she was. Because, I mean... I, th I think also with her, you know what hurt her is that um, when, it was, when it was over, she got... She actually got a tremendous amount of publicity leaving the WWF. 
But what happened is she did all, all those talk shows, and she just really didn't have it. I mean, I remember seeing on those talk shows, and it's like, oh, my God, there's nothing there. And I think right. that probably killed her. That killed her off pretty quick. If she, like, had had a, a dynamic personality, she still may have run up. But, I mean, at least she would have had more of a chance. Yeah, but you know what? She does Playboy, and Playboy usually, sometimes it can really boost a person's career. I mean, sometimes yeah. it doesn't, but sometimes it does. But like you said, you got to be able to talk and back it up. Well, I think Playboy Playboy made her, took her to another level, especially since she sold so many issues. Yeah. But then by leaving WWF, it was kind of like, you know, when, when she left WWF, that was kind of it. Right. Plus, she didn't get her name anymore. Yeah. yeah you know, that, that thing can hurt you right there. Missy, we got to go. We're like totally out of time right now. I want to thank you very much for doing the show. Anytime, Dave. Anytime. Thank you for having uh, me. On. Okay, and and uh, as the book, you know, as the book comes, you know, make sure to let us know and everything, because like I want, I want to read the book. I'm definitely sending you one of the first copies off the press. Awesome. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Bye.